Have you struggled to find a good system for expense reimbursements? Keeping track of receipts is one of the most annoying little inconveniences of running a business or working at one. Luckily, we can build a sweet Airtable base to solve this problem. One of my favorite features in Airtable is attachment fields. The fact that you can just drag and drop an attachment right into a cell. But today we're gonna to go even further than that. The system we'll build today will allow anyone on your team to submit expenses through a form. We'll set up an easy workflow for you to select the reimbursements that you wanna pay, add them up to a total, and we'll set up an automated email for the person who's gonna get the check with a list of what they're being reimbursed for. We'll also make a dashboard to easily see who has outstanding expenses. So let's build it. All right, so this base is going to have three fields, one for expenses, one for the people who are submitting expenses, and then one for the checks that we write to reimburse people. Starting with the expenses table, I've already created some fields and I put in some example data. So when people uh, submit an expense, they're gonna have a vendor, the date that they purchased it, category, the little description of what they bought, and obviously the cost and a receipt. All right, so the first thing that I want to do is I want to link the expenses table with both of the other tables because any expense is gonna be linked to a person who made the purchase and also eventually to a check. So I'm gonna create two new fields here. The first one will be called purchasers. And we will link to another record and link to purchasers. And we're just gonna allow linking to one record. So then our next, uh, next one that we're gonna create here will be a link to reimbursement checks. So we'll link to a record reimbursement checks. So now that we've linked both of these other tables, let's just take a look at what we're dealing with here. So the purchasers table has a list of our purchasers, and then we are going to sum the expenses that they submit, and then the reimbursements, and then through that we'll calculate how much they owe, and this is of course the link that we just set up. And then the reimbursement checks, we're gonna have uh, a date of the check and the check number. And then through this workflow here, we will we'll look up the amounts based on the different expenses that we link to this table. And then we can look up the purchaser and generate a whole list of the expenses that are included in each reimbursement. So basically we're setting this up so that we're not just reimbursing one expense at a time, but if we wanna choose five, 10, 100 expenses that we all wanna add up together into one check that we're gonna issue, uh, we can do that here. And then we have this little checkbox over here that we'll set up to send an email to the person who's going to receive the check. So back in our expenses table, let's add some purchaser links in here. So I'm just gonna assign some random purchasers to the example data that we have. And we won't link any reimbursement checks yet. We'll wait to do that till we get to that table. So the next thing I wanna do is to create a form so that people can easily submit work expenses. So we'll go down here, click form, call it expense form, create new view. And this is already pretty much exactly the way we want it, although we do not need the reimbursement check in here. So we'll drag that out. I'm gonna drag purchaser to the top. And then I'm gonna say purchaser here to make it a little more clear that the person needs to enter their name. So name, vendor, date, category. I like to make these a list rather than a drop down. It's easier to fill out. And this is all good, receipt. Um, one, the last thing I'll do on this form is that I'm gonna make these required. So if you want to make sure that people are gonna submit all this information, you can just toggle these here and it will not allow them to submit the form without filling these out. All right, back in our grid, the last thing I wanna do before moving on to the purchasers table is to fill out this summary field. And so basically what I wanna do here is we're collecting a whole bunch of information through the form and I wanna pass all that information along when we link the expense to uh, the other tables. And so to do that, I'm gonna create a summary field that includes all of that in one line. So here, I'm gonna open it up. I'm gonna turn this into a formula. 
And then what I want to put here is the cost, the vendor, and what they bought. So I'm going to put a little dollar sign in quotations here and then add the cost. Then we'll add a little parentheses here because I'm not going to put in the kind of more detail stuff. So now we'll add the vendor, a little colon, and what did they buy? And the parentheses. So now we've got our $14 cafe latte, $5 stork pens, whatever those are. So we're doing great with this table. Let's move on to the purchaser table now. So in our purchaser table, now that we've linked expenses, we want to sum up the cost of these expenses. And we're going to do that here. So if I open this field up, I'm going to turn it into a roll up field. So a roll up is going to look up all of the expenses that are associated with this purchaser. And then it's going to aggregate them, like add them up, average them in some way based on the instructions that we give it here. So we're rolling up the expenses link. That's the only thing that's linked here. And then we are going to choose the cost that we're going to roll up and I'm going to sum the values. So when I click save here, now I get a sum of all of the expenses that each person has submitted. So now we want to sum up the reimbursements. So what are all of the items that people have already been reimbursed for? In our case, it's going to be nothing, but we want to set this up so that it shows us when uh, people have been paid out. So to do that, we're going to be a little tricky. I'm going to actually set this up exactly like the field here, but then we're going to add a condition. So if I open this up, I will turn this into a roll up field. And so same thing, we're linked to expenses and we're going to look up the cost. And then we're going to sum the values. But before I click save, I'm also going to toggle this little toggle here that says only include linked records from the expenses table that meets certain conditions. And in here, I'm going to say where reimbursement checks is not empty. So what this is saying is that if there is a reimbursement check associated with the expense, then we're going to consider it paid. Otherwise, we are not going to add it up because it's not paid yet. So I'll click save and we've got all zeros here because we've got no reimbursement checks yet. Now, if you are have a system where you might reimburse a partial amount from a receipt, uh, we would probably set this up a little differently. This one is going to be set up so that you either pay the receipt or you don't pay the receipt. OK, so the last thing that we're going to do is to calculate the amount owed and we're going to owe all of this stuff now because we haven't done any reimbursements. So let's open this up turn this into a formula and then this formula is going to be the sum of the work expenses minus the sum of the reimbursements. And so, and let's open this back up again and make it a currency field format, currency format. And all right, that's great. This table is looking perfect. So let's move on to our reimbursement checks. In our reimbursement checks table, we've got a check number, we've got a date. And the first thing that we want to look up is the amount being reimbursed. So we've got our expenses link over here. Let's actually drag this to the beginning. So let's say I want to pay Sarabi for all of her expenses. We've got this one here and we've got this one here. And is that it? That's it. So we've got a couple of expenses here for Sarabi. And now let's add up the amount. So I want to make this a roll up. And this is going to roll up the cost, just like we did in the other table. Sum of the values. And that's great. We owe her $24. And then we can even look up the purchaser. So here we're going to make another roll up. And this is just to know that we're reimbursing Sarabi and also this will help us to see if we accidentally select reimbursements for two different people. So what I'm going to do here is I am going to choose the purchaser and then instead of summing the values here, we're actually going to use this formula called array unique. What this does is it takes uh, the list of all of the purchasers from each expense 
And so for example, here we have two expenses with Sarabi. If you just took the whole array, right, which is, it's really grabbing an array in computer speak, then it would say Sarabi comma Sarabi. And if we added one from Pumba by accident, then it would say Sarabi, Sarabi, Pumba. So by saying array unique, it's going to get rid of any duplicates. So in our case, it's just gonna say Sarabi because both of the expenses are the same purchaser. If there were two different purchasers, it would show both of them here. So I'll click save and that worked. Now let's do our expense list. So this is gonna take that summary that we already created in the expense table that says the vendor, the cost, et cetera, all in one spot. And then it'll actually generate a list of all of the different expenses so that then we can take that info, send it in the email to the person uh, who's getting the check. So this is going to be a roll up as well. And so we can go and choose our summary. And this one is another array of formula, but we're gonna use array join. And then it's kind of annoying that they don't show you the documentation on this one, but if we actually put a comma here and then in quotations, we put a back slash and an N, that is the, the sign for creating a new line. And so basically it's gonna take the array of all these different summaries for each expense and uh, separate them each by a line. So if I click save now and open this up, I can see that they each have their own line. And if we had 10 of them, they would all just be in a nice list. So, and the way that we can make sure that once things are reimbursed once, they won't show up in our list of possible reimbursements is by filtering the link um, or limiting the link uh, to a view. And so we'll create a view in our expenses that says, you know, these are the ones that have already been reimbursed. So if I go back into expenses here, what's something that is an easy way to see if it was reimbursed? Right here, if it's got a re reimbursement check, then it was reimbursed. So I'm gonna create a new grid view and we'll call this not reimbursed because that's what we wanna know is what's not reimbursed. Create new view. And then we will filter this and the condition will be where reimbursement checks is empty. Okay, so now we have only our non-reimbursed expenses here. And if I go back to the reimbursement checks, open this up, now I'm gonna limit this selection to a view and limit it to not reimbursed. And so now the two that already have been reimbursed and that we haven't notified and we probably haven't set the check yet, but these are going to be reimbursed. Um, so it's three in one. So now if I go in here, I can see that those ones, number three and number one from Sarabi are not here because we filtered them out. We are getting very close here. This is starting to look like a real system. The next thing I wanna do though is to set up the automation so that we can easily notify the person who's getting a check what they're gonna get their check for. So I've got this checkbox field here that we can use to trigger the automation, but we are gonna need an email address, which is all the way over in our purchasers table. And there's no direct link between reimbursement checks and purchasers. So if we go over here and this actually is hidden, so let's unhide our email address. We've got our email addresses here and we need to go to the next table that it's actually linked to, which is expenses. So let's look up the email addresses in expenses. So we'll create a new table, call that email, we'll make this a lookup, and then we're gonna look up in purchasers the email. So now we've got our email here in the expenses table. And now if I go to reimbursement checks, we can look up again. And so this one we're going to call email. Okay, and this one I'm gonna call a roll up because if we have multiple expenses, it's gonna throw us multiple emails, even if they're the same email address. And so we're gonna to need to use our array unique function again. So we've got a roll up here. In expenses, we'll grab the email and then we'll use array unique. All right, there's Sarabi's email address. So now that we've got that, 
let's go and make an automation. So for the trigger, I'm going to click when a record matches conditions. And what's the record? It's going to be that checkbox that we have. So let's find the reimbursement checks table. And we will trigger when the notify purchaser checkbox is checked. Now we want to email. When that's checked, we want to send an email. So I'm going to go add action. Gmail, I want to send this from my Gmail account. And so I'll go in here, click the Gmail account that I want to send from. And then in the to field, I can now go in and find the email. Subject, you have a new reimbursement on the way. And then in our message, what I want to include is that summary and then the grand total of the reimbursement. And we might as well address it to Serapi as well. So I'm going to say, hi, purchaser. Here are the items you're being reimbursed for. Then we'll add in our expense list. And then we want our total. So the grand total is, and for that, we want the amount. In order to preview this, we're going to need to check the box. So let's go back into data. We'll check the box to notify Sarabi. And if I go back into automations here, let's choose that record to test. And then we'll go into the email, generate a preview. And yeah, OK, it says, hi, Sarabi. Here are the items you're being reimbursed for. And the grand total is 24. Ooh, and there's no dollar sign. So let's add a dollar sign. All right, so let's turn the automation on and that's it. So if we go back into the data and look at the purchasers, we can see here that the uh, reimbursement was logged. So it was $24 to Sarabi and we don't owe her anything anymore, but we owe everyone else money or not everyone, but a couple other, other uh, people money. So let's just do one more for practice. We're going to, uh, why don't we reimburse SCAR? So if I want to go here, let's pick out SCAR. And I think we've got a couple here for him. Great. So we owe him 30 bucks. And uh, so, you know, outside of Airtable, we're going to cut that check. And then we can notify purchaser. And that will send an email to SCAR. That is the expense reimbursement space. If you like this video and you want to watch similar videos, check out these videos here. It is my favorite thing ever to receive and respond to comments. So if you have any questions, thoughts, please leave them in the chat below.